Hello, on In the Hyperloop, today we're talking with Virginia Tech. The team Hyperloop at Virginia Tech competed in SpaceX pod competition rounds in a design round. And today we're talking with the business lead and lead mechanical. Hi, Hamza and Emily. Thank you so much for joining In the Hyperloop. I really appreciate you taking your time out of a Sunday. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, so I've been a part of the team for about a, a year and a half now. Uh, obviously, uh, my name's Hamza. I'm the uh, manufacturing team lead right now. Um, the team's been around for about three years now. We started out with our success in the Texas A&M University uh, competition. We, we placed really well over there, got some good public visibility. Actually, we got some support from Hyperloop One in that. They gave us a very large check that kind of helped uh, streamline our designs and give us funding to keep moving forward with that. Next, we got invited to the uh, SpaceX Competition One, and we placed really well there. We actually placed fourth place in that competition. And that was international competition. We were going up against teams like Delphi University, VAR, all the teams that you see still sticking around that are big in the media nowadays. Um, we just had our last competition this past summer, um, or sorry, the second SpaceX competition this past summer. We placed uh, seventh out of 26 international teams then. Uh, we learned a lot of lessons about um, the, the importance of system integration, doing a lot more work on the front end, and working really hard to make sure everyone's definitely on the same page and we're excited to continue on to the next competition that's coming up this July 22nd I believe is the public viewing day and that's that's coming up this summer it's it's coming up quick yeah it's 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 going by so quickly and and you yeah. when you you've been with the team for a year but you've seen such an improvement um, oh yeah that definitely time. and I'm sorry Emily you're your business lead yes uh, so I basically joined uh last November so I'm pretty new uh to things but most of my job has been involving uh, social media outreach, sponsorship, getting our name out there even more so. Uh, but of course, as Hamza said, uh, all of the competitions and how we've placed and, and performed and what tech is known for by their reputation as being such uh, uh, an engineering institution has really helped streamline uh, our publicity and getting to competitions. It's a huge name and I'm I don't, don't want to ask if you're nervous, but <laughs> are you nervous for this next competition at all? I mean, yeah, there's there's always reasons yeah. to be nervous. We're yeah. going up against some good schools with a lot of resources, but at the same time, we're, we're really excited to bring our concept, our idea, and take the fruits of our work throughout the entire year and, and build a pod. We're, we're in, the, in the, the latter end of our manufacturing phase right now. So, I mean, we're, we're all really stoked to, to take this pot out to California and run it on the track. Um, how did both of you become interested in Hyperloop or how did you hear about the competition? I have a lot of engineering friends, uh, not shockingly, being at tech uh, where, you know, everyone's an engineer. Uh, and so they told me about it and I actually ended up kind of sneaking into one of the early me meetings at the beginning of this school year. Oh, cool. And when they were like, oh, yeah, and here's our business team. And there's like one marketing person. I'm like, I, I think that you probably need a couple more of those. And so as a business information technology and finance, I've got mm -hmm. a vested interest in uh, Hyperloop and technology and finance and all of those kind of intersections. Mm -hmm. And and for myself, when the team started up, I was actually off on, on a co-op. Oh, I yeah. took a school and worked in industry and design and manufacturing engineering. And the, the core team that actually started up the Hyperloop at Virginia Tech team, mm -hmm. I had a uh, gone to school with a bunch of them I had taken a bunch of classes with them we we hung out played sports together so I was I was already well connected with them I knew um, I heard all about these these crazy ideas they were coming up mm -hmm. with and just hearing hearing about it talking to them and then right when I came back after my co-op the first thing I did was start going on to hyperloop meetings I showed my interest in there it felt it was really exciting to be surrounded by people coming up with some some wild ideas and actually taking them and figuring them how to turn them into something something tangible. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of different perspectives to make these pods go, and it's yeah. a lot of effort. And Emily, mm -hmm. with your with your background and being able to kind of have a larger picture of you know sponsorship, awareness, and you know getting outreach, it it takes a huge amount of effort to put this together. Um, Certainly, yeah. yeah. How does the future with Hyperloop affect rural and urban communities, do you think? So uh, Blacksburg is kind of in a, a funny situation where we are uh, an agricultural institution originally and then built upon it. So we've got a lot of rural background, mm -hmm. but Roanoke and areas around us, Richmond isn't too far away. They're all very uh, booming metropolises. Uh, and so it's, it's really inter interesting to see how our little tiny college is uh, growing to 
become a city in itself and then how we are going to interact with all of these new center centers of uh basically just enterprise yeah. uh, and so yeah being from richmond myself and and commuting between the two i could definitely use a hyperloop to <laughs> between vacations that's yeah. for sure. that's that's interesting when you're spending that much time on the road <laughs> you're just like i just want to go a little bit faster please come on yeah. people. <laughs> 65 doesn't seem like nearly enough on 81 <laughs> so in your role um in positions as business lead and uh manufacturing lead what are some of the biggest challenges that you face um i, I guess i'll speak first on that yeah. so we've got a we've got a good amount of people on the team we've got about 30 35 uh, members on the team and one big thing I mean the larger your team gets the harder it is to streamline mm. um, ideas kind of getting everyone on the same page because everyone's got their own their own opinions their own perspectives but kind of working with kind of the leaders of the team working with the chief engineer working with our project manager working with our electric lead um, mm. getting everyone on the same page and really getting in buy-in from from different team members. Yeah. Giving everyone the, the chance and opportunity to speak their voice is really important to us. You can come in, on our team, you can come in as a freshman, have had two months of schooling or two months of experience, and you can come in there and design a full system on our pod. Now, nothing's stopping you from doing that. The only person that's stopping that is you. So we like to stress that for us at Hyperloop at Virginia Tech, it's all about opportunity. You just have to reach out there and grab it and kind of being in a, in a leadership role. It's sometimes tricky to balance perspective. You've, you've had people that have had four years of schooling and a year of industry experience working, designing rockets, missiles, mm -hmm. XYZ, a, a whole list of things and kind of getting everyone on the same page is one of those interesting adventures. But on the business side, uh, <laughs> it's a lot about like he said, getting involved and and just really uh, getting over the there's a slight intimidation factor when it comes to calling big corporations yeah. uh, and especially with with new people that we take onto the team where we're like, yeah, we need you to start like cold calling this vice president of, of this huge corporation that you've known about your entire life. And it's like, OK, uh, so just getting people on board with that idea and then participation, participation, participation is always a thing that we're trying to uh, get across to everyone, whether that be older, new team members. It's a fine orchestra, both, both on the business side and uh, but also on the engineering side and making sure every every base is being covered. Touched upon some of the challenges that you face on a daily basis. What are what do you like working about in this uh, Hyperloop community? or in your role in particular? Um, yeah, and in my opinion, doing um, taking part in design teams and uh, undergrad research, kind of these extra curricular activities that are still related to curriculum is where you learn the most. I mean, anyone can sit in a classroom, hey, I can go to class and learn thermodynamics from 10 to 12 o'clock. I go to class from nine to five, but after that, when you're working on these designs in your free time, you're not getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. You're sitting there in labs, in, in, our, in our workspaces off campus from 10 p.m. until 3 a.m. and then you go out, grab some cookout, get a quick burger, a little bite to eat, then you come back and work again from 5 to 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. and then you go take a nap and then go to class. All the, the excitement's about you spend you spend so much time. Kind of at the end of it, it's always worth it because you're working with, uh, in my opinion, the brightest minds that come out of out of this school because you're working with people that are dedicated to the cause. They will cut out their sleep in a, in a heartbeat to work on on things like this, and that's that's what I love about being on the team is is not sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> you just um that's what i noticed at the pod competition weekend um i've never seen people work so hard <laughs> yeah. to get to this point um, yeah i mean we were up until during competition week we were up until hmm, 3 4 a.m sometimes we actually an interesting scenario we had a. Uh, we had some pneumatics work that had to be done, mm -hmm. and our Airbnb was about a mile and a half away from SpaceX headquarters. Uh -huh. So we actually rolled our pod back through the streets of LA. <laughs> our, what mile? Hawthorne on the side of the road. We're driving by. Pedestrians are like, um, "What? What is this?" Like, like a, we had a cop car drive by us, and he's just looking over. And I'm like, "I mean, he can stop us. We'll tell him what we're doing <laughs> here. A big deal." But it was just, it That's just shows you the the kind of dedication that there is for, yeah. for the people that come out of these teams. I, I like that about the Hyperloop community. They're just really passionate about this concept and idea and proving yeah. an idea. And yeah, I don't see that very frequently. So it's really fun to <laughs> to see somebody pushing yeah. a pod one mile uphill. <laughs> Everybody it likes a, it. It was a long hot walk. So Emily, what do you like working about um, in this Virginia? tech hyperloop it's kind of corny but one of tech's slogans is invent the future and so i just really love being a business person and being able to see all of these engineering assignments especially because uh 
well, this project is very much what you could be doing in the real world, even as a business professional. Uh, and to see the ins and outs and the conversations that have to happen and then seeing how that translates into finance or technology or modeling and that kind of stuff. That's what we learn in the classroom. And there's kind of a disconnect that you get in the theoretical classroom sense where you've got uh, an ancient looking professor lecturing about these concepts. And then you're just like, I, I don't know how that's going to work in the real world, but I'll take your word for it. Cause uh, so it's, it's really great to, to have these conversations with engineers and to see how I can produce value for them and how they can produce value uh, for our team. Just to even spending it with, you know, a couple months within the team and you just learn so much, just how you grow as a person. Um, mm -hmm. If you could connect anywhere on earth or, I mean, Emily, you already kind of said <laughs> what's your city, so sorry. Oh, yes, Richmond, Blacksburg, Richmond, Washington, D.C. Uh, I'm super partial to Seattle, so if I could get oh. myself to Seattle without having to take that horrible, expensive flight, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be awesome. <laughs> nope. I guess I'd, I'd be biased for D.C. connecting to uh, New York City. That's just because I'm from D.C., so I guess I'll, I'll, I'll pitch in there. and That'd be really cool to me. I wouldn't mind uh, waking up on a Friday, 10 a.m., <laughs> walking over to the local Hyperloop, hopping in, and then being in New York City just, just like that. For, go, I could just go uh, to New York City for lunch and come back if I needed to. That is so amazing. <laughs> That's so amazing. That Lastly, you know, if you could ask Elon Musk any question, Hyperloop related or not, what would you ask? <laughs> I guess I'd I'd ask him if you had any like if you had any advice for young engineers that are growing up nowadays, what's the most important thing or lesson that he's learned so far when he's been creating his his empire of industries? That's Just like if you could sum that up in one sentence, be like, Hey, here's here's a sentence from yep. from Elon. That's interesting, yeah. I wonder what that would be. Me too. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so thanks again for taking the time out of your busy schedule and joining in the Hyperloop. Uh, for viewers that want to learn more about Hyperloop at Virginia Tech, what would be the best way to find you guys? So we've got Facebook pages, Twitter pages, we've got a website, and it's all uh, VT Hyperloop. Yeah. So if you type in, go on Facebook, type in Hyperloop at Virginia Tech. If you go on Google, type in Virginia Tech Hyperloop, I'm sure will yeah, pop we'll up. up. <laughs> we've been we've been in the news, local news around here a couple of times as well. So there's some articles you can learn a little bit about us, and uh, feel free to send us messages on Facebook. We're happy to to talk to anybody interested. So now we know where to find you online. Is there any other um, way you want companies to help out or individual donors? Well, you know, we live in Virginia and we don't have a Hyperloop track yet to get us to competitions. So we'd really appreciate any kind of sponsorship. Uh, and you can reach us through all of our social media accounts. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thanks.